This is a talk about decoupling the Cloud Foundry build packs from the Cloud Foundry application runtime. I'm going to talk about CF Local. I'm also going to kind of talk about build packs model in general and why we like build packs and think they are awesome. Uh, so I am a software engineer at Pivotal. I'm the project lead for uh, CF build packs, CF dev, and CF Local right now. Uh, I am required by the city of Boston to announce this fire exit announcement. So very quickly, please note the locations of the surrounding emergency exits and locate the nearest exit sign near you in the event of a fire alarm or emergency. Please calmly exit to the public concourse area. Emergency exit stairwells leading to the outside of this facility are located along the public concourse for your safety in an emergency. Please follow the directions of the public safety staff. Thank you. Okay. So why should I use build packs? And why are build packs important? And I think a big part of this question is, uh, why should I use build packs over Docker files, which are really popular right now? So Docker files have a lot of purported benefits. They uh, are really transparent. You can really tell what's going on in a Docker file. That's a really simple model, and people sort of like that, that you can you know, read each, each line and understand what's happening. And they provide a lot of control. So you can, in a Docker file, you can do whatever you want. You can uh, set up your application you know, correctly, or you can set it up to be really insecure and you know, have a lot of production stability problems. Uh, they also build images that are really convenient for sort of shipping to production because they're immutable layers that, uh, they're sort of made of immutable layers that uh, you know, don't change, and so you can know that you're deploying the same thing that you tested. And people like those things, and you know, there, there are benefits to that. But there are a lot of caveats for building applications using Docker files. So uh, in it, when you build an app using a Docker file, you tend to lock external dependencies behind application code. So that when you patch, when you, when you need to patch those dependencies, it's really expensive because you have to rebuild all the layers on top of them. And, and with Docker files, it also, you know, part of that model means it's really uh, difficult to enforce structures uh, sorry, to enforce structure or opinions about how application, how application should be built. Because uh, you can kind of do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, the, there's a loose contract between base layers in a Docker file and application layers, so you don't have to configure your application any particular way. And developers, you know, a lot of developers like this because it means they can you know, configure their app however they want to, and it's, it's straightforward. But uh, in an enterprise setting especially, this is uh, you know, difficult for security and for uh, you know, configuring apps the same way for production stability. So uh, this is especially bad for enterprise apps because it makes it difficult for an operator to control the contents of applications uh, that are shipped as images. And it makes it really difficult for uh, 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 enterprise operators to audit Docker files as well because there's no particular structure to them. You could have insecure dependencies kind of anywhere, anywhere you'd, you'd think. Uh, so, I'm going to do, examine this one. Uh, I'm going to talk about this one uh, CVE in OpenSSL from uh, 2016. It was a high severity CVE. There's a memory leak uh, in OpenSSL that could result in uh, a denial of service attack if your application is fed ciphertext, like encrypted uh, data, that is sort of malicious. So if you have a Node.js app that uses OpenSSL and the app is built using Docker, uh, the Usually, your app would be built <coughs> excuse me, uh, from three Docker files. So one Docker file might be from Canonical or from an operating system vendor where it would have uh, Ubuntu packages in it or CentOS packages or whatever uh, that include OpenSSL. And then on top of that, you might have a Node.js uh, Docker file that's based on that image and adds Node.js. Uh, and then on top, and then you'd have your application Docker file on top of that from the Node.js layer, and that would contain your application code. And in the case of Node, you'd install your your Node modules. So when that high CVE hits, you have uh, the vulnerable OpenSSL at the very bottom layer of that, locked beneath all those different layers. So updating that that requires rebuilding all the layers on top of it. So if you have 500 Node.js apps. Then on September 26th, 2016, you're uh, in a little bit of a pickle. So if you, don't do your do if you don't manage your Docker files well, all your developers will have started their Docker files on different base images. And so you'll have to hope that they rebuild all their applications and deploy them in some amount of time in order to patch this high CVE quickly. Uh, realistically, that's not gonna happen. It may, 
if, if their base images aren't maintained, you may never patch the CVE for every app in your organization. If you do Docker files better, you can, uh, you know, you'd use a, a corporate uh, base image with a corporate version of Node, potentially, that everybody in your organization would use. And then, to patch the CVE, you just have to rebuild all of the applications, retest them, and redeploy them. That's definitely better than the previous scenario here, but it's still not great. Uh, the, uh, you know, you'd have to hope that all the, all the pipelines for all these applications are working, and it could you know, still take a week or more to, to patch everything. Let's look at the CF model for applications, though. So in Cloud Foundry, we don't use immutable container layers. We build a droplet that's the separate artifact from the operating system level dependencies that's not linked to it. Uh, it's, it we rely on something called ABI compatibility that allows us to update the operating system level packages separate from the droplet. Uh, and so when that OpenSSL CVE hits, you're in a much better position. So I'll talk a little bit about ABI compatibility. So that means application binary interface. Uh, it's a guarantee that operating system providers uh, provide that says that when uh, they patch uh, their, their operating system level packages, uh, they uh, won't break compatibility at the binary level. So if you have uh, object code that's linked to object code at the operating system, uh, provided by the operating system, it will still work after they patch those packages. And in Cloud Foundry, our operating system layer in applications is called CF Linux FS2, and it's currently based on Ubuntu 14.04. Uh, this month or next month, we'll be releasing CF Linux FS3, which is based on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Uh, that'll come really soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, so I want to talk about how Cloud Foundry manages this, this same process. So when you do a Bosch deploy of Cloud Foundry, we're going to go cell by cell and start new cells with a new uh, root FS. So each application is starting with new operating system level dependencies while the previous version of the application is running. And this happens live in production. So your applications are running, you do the Bosch deploy, new applications start coming up on new cells with a new root FS, and we take the old cells down. And we do this cell by cell until your whole platform is, uh, has been patched. And this process usually takes a few hours. It's really fast compared to having lots of pipelines rebuild all of your Docker images every time a CVE comes out. So why you all might be here is why limit this to Cloud Foundry? Why, why do we want to use, you know, why is this model something that only Cloud Foundry can provide? Can't we do this in other places? The answer is we can. So uh, let's go back to that Node.js app I talked about before. We could translate that into uh, uh, so OCI image land world, <laughs> where we could build a droplet layer and a rootFS layer uh, and, and link those to each other like Docker images are built. But then, you know, we have ABI compatibility between those layers, but we wouldn't, we'd still have to rebuild the droplet on top of a new rootFS. It wouldn't really give us many benefits. So recently, some new tools have come out that let you rebase Docker images. And so you can take a, a previously generated Docker image and point it at a new, uh, uh, base image. Uh, an example of this is uh, Jason Hall at Google has a tool called Imagery Base uh, that works really well for this purpose. And, oh sorry, uh, so you can see here you can uh, rebase the droplet on a new root FS. And with some of these tools like uh, Jason Hall's Imagery Base, you can do this remotely uh, in a Docker registry without downloading anything. So you can take a layer in a Docker registry and point it at another base layer without really any data transfer you know, pretty instantly. So with 500 Node.js apps, you could update a Docker registry to have all new base, or to point all your droplet layers at a new rootFS layer pretty much instantly, which is very similar to what you do in Cloud Foundry. Sorry? No, you don't. Uh, you don't have to download anything. You can just... Uh, yeah, so... Uh, you wouldn't have to do a Docker rebuild of those images. You would still have to redeploy those, those images, you know, in however your platform handles that, right? Uh, I'm not, not picking a particular, uh, you know, container platform to, to describe this. Anything that uses image layers, you know, you could do it with. Uh, cool. So why stop there? We can, uh, on top of uh, these, you know, if we use this OCI 
uh, image model, we can extend the you know, way we do things currently to be even sort of more effective. So for instance, we could separate the application layer from the dependency layer so that Node.js and your application are separate. And the build pack could manage the, uh, a contract between those that wouldn't be ABI compatibility, but would be something like, in the case of Node, if your package.json file doesn't change, then we can reuse the same dependency layer from the last build to, be, to make this even more efficient. And in multi-build pack mode, we could separate dependency layers generated by different build packs so that we don't even have to run every build pack to restage an application. Just the build packs that are uh, you know, associated with your app, uh, uh, you know, or just the build packs that uh, would need to be rerun to build dependencies that need to be pulled in for when the, they're you know, updated in your application specification. So we can go even further th from, than this, <clears throat> and uh, we can make use of uh, build caching so that, uh, that that could be shared between build packs uh, so that build packs could still take advantage of each other's dependencies, but you wouldn't have to re-download droplet layers to restage. You could just literally do the minimum thing possible to generate new layers. So the goal here is to minimize build time and data transfer for these builds. So we have a few things in progress that sort of work towards uh, building this new uh, you know, interface. Uh, one is CF local. Uh, so CF local is a tool I put together that lets you use build packs to generate droplets. And, it, and the only dependency this has is Docker. Usually you use a local Docker daemon to do this, but you can actually use a remote Docker daemon too. Uh, so CF local will let you build droplets using build packs locally. Uh, it'll let you pull droplets from uh, Cloud Foundry, uh, and you, know, you can also run those locally too. Or you can push droplets to Cloud Foundry droplets that you've generated or droplets that you've pulled from it. So it's a great, it's a great tool for, for debugging and iterating locally on Cloud Foundry apps. And it's much faster than Cloud Foundry because you don't have to upload anything and you're doing the whole staging process locally. Uh, it also has sort of special support for connecting to services running in Cloud Foundry. And if you're interested in this, here's some, it's up on GitHub and Cloud Foundry Incubator. Uh, it's also still on Pivotal.io at pivotal.io slash cf-local. So, the backend for CF Local has just been extracted into images that are independently usable from CF Local. Uh, so there's an image published to Docker Hub called pack slash CF that will let you, without CF Local, without any other tools besides Docker, uh, use Docker images uh, as sort of processing tools to build droplets and run them and export them as images. These are sort of, uh, use the same, an interface that's similar to Google's Cloud Builders. Uh, so uh, you can use these uh, Docker images as uh, base images in platforms like Concourse or really anything that runs uh, uh, application containers uh, or anything that runs app, uh, Docker images. <laughs> uh, in the future, I'm, so I'm currently working on a Concourse resource that'll use these uh, base images and just spit out new versions of applications all the time using these strategies like remote imagery basing and uh, remote layer appending. And finally, most exciting announcement here <laughs> is we, we are collaborating with Heroku on a uh, new sort of more uniform uh, build pack API that uh, would, where Cloud Foundry build packs and Heroku build packs would be more compatible with each other when used in, uh, with, in multi build pack mode. Uh, we're also trying to collaborate on sharing more tools and uh, optimizing application builds. Uh, so I'll have more about that later this year. <laughs> Sorry, optimizing application builds. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? Sorry, uh, Brett, you want to hand him the mic? Yeah, sure. Cool. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could uh, go back a couple slides to that initial um, one more. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions? There. In your talk, in the demo, you mentioned that CF Local is available only for Mac now, but Windows is coming soon. When is that? 
Uh, so actually, that's CF Dev. Oh, so CF the, Dev. the first alpha release of CF Dev, which is a different tool, it's a, a whole Cloud Foundry you can install locally, is only for Mac. But CF Local runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. All, okay. all same features across all platforms, as long as you have Docker there. Cool. And the second thing you showed is the multi build pack thing. Yeah. Is that available today with the CF V3 push, or is that something else? Yeah, you can use multiple build packs with uh, CF V3 push. Eventually, it'll be in the CF push command also. Uh, that's, that's coming pretty soon, uh, having talked to the CLI team. Uh, it doesn't work quite like this. It doesn't use images, uh, but it still lets you supply dependencies from different build packs to the application. Yeah, what I've also noticed is when you do the V3 push, it's overwriting some of the core uh, uh, dependencies in the initial build pack. Uh, what I was hoping is, let's say, I push a Java one, and then I push a static build pack, or a binary build pack that says, just overlay the same container with additional files, but keep the original entry point. That's, is there any way to get that behavior? Uh, so let me, let me see if I understood that. Uh, you want to provide uh, different dependencies from different build packs into one application, but you want, mul you want like multiple processes running at the same time? No, only one process, the Java one. But let's say it uses IBM Cplex uh, runtime, which includes some runtimes and some libraries and things like that that are, need to be available on the host, but they don't need to be actively running. They will be invoked through JNI on the jar, through the jar files that are already in my first app. So sense. I want to be able to manage the second set of Cplex libraries independently than package it into my original app. That way it can be versioned independently than doing it all as one app, and then have this nightmare of uh, managing versions of Cplex. Makes sense. Let's, let's talk after. I think uh, it would be easier to uh, figure out exactly what your use case is and uh, you know, talk about it you know, offline. Anybody else? Over there in the back. So that was just a very high level uh, introduction to CF Local. So can you tell us how people are using it to make their lives easier or better? Uh, so uh, CF Local will let you iterate really quickly on Cloud Foundry apps without needing to uh, repush them. And the staging process is much faster. So if you want an environment that looks more similar to your production Cloud Foundry environment, uh, you can use CF Local to, you know, iterate really rapidly, but also have that environment available locally. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this works across all languages, and that's, you know, I've, I've seen people uh, use it that way. Uh, it's especially nice with Java, actually, because you can use Spring Boot Dev tools uh, locally with an app running in CF Local uh, to, you know, sort of update application source code and see it, your application update instantly without even restaging. Uh, that, that's one example of a place where I've seen people use it really effectively. Anybody else? Uh, when you build things, when you do a, a CF local image, is it always going to be a Docker image, uh, or can you convert it back into the standard syntax where we can do CF push? So actually, CF local doesn't generate Docker images. It generates droplets that don't include the rootfs. Uh, that's when you do a CF local stage, you get a droplet file in your local directory, and you even get a build cache file in your local directory. And so you can re-export those without restaging with a new rootfs whenever you want to. So it, it, it gives that model the platform has, but, but locally in Docker. So on a build Jenkins server, let's say, what are the steps that would be there? I mean, would it be doing a CF push there, or? Would it be running CF local on the Jenkins server and doing this and then pushing it? Uh, so if you want to push, use CF local to push an application to Cloud Foundry that you built locally, is that the question? Yeah. yeah. So you could do a CF local stage and then you get a droplet file in your local directory and then you could do a, a CF local push and it would actually push that droplet without the rootfs part up to Cloud Foundry uh, and then start the application in Cloud Foundry. And you wouldn't need a Docker image you know, anywhere in that process. Uh, you'd just uh, be uploading the, the droplet. But the Jenkins server, what does the Jenkins server have? Like if I'm doing the CICD and is this just for purely testing? And is there any artifacts that I do with CF local reusable when I check into Bitbucket somehow to be picked up by Jenkins server? Uh, so 
Not, not sure I, I totally understood that. I, I don't think you want the end, the end results of the CF local process to be able to push to an OCI registry, if that's what you're saying. Because yeah, that's... You want to rebuild it from the bucket, right? Like, for example, if there's an app that is using the uh, thing, and use local to test and create a droplet, but I'm not going to post the droplet somewhere for objective to push it to the performance, right? Uh, I, you, you could, and that, 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 that's a workflow I've seen people do in Concourse, where you generate a droplet and you store that in S3, and then you re-export an uh, image out of the droplet and upload that to another platform, or upload the droplet to, to Cloud Foundry. That, that's, a, that's a workable workflow. That, that, uh, that's we're, we're working on a Concourse resource and some other tools that are sort of more effective tools for CI, uh, and less, that are less targeted at local development, too. It should help you with things like that. Yeah, I think, I think you're, you're going to want things in your CI pipeline that are going to validate in other ways that the dev wouldn't necessarily. So you don't want the devs to push up the final droplet necessarily. All right, anybody else? So I've had some people um, express concerns that the typical CF development pipeline is to have something like you push an app through development and it works and then pipeline pushes it through dev and then our stage and then into production but each time you have a different droplet it, does this give us a much better tool set then for saying yes we have one droplet that then is then moved through different pipelines or different stages in a pipeline and validated or is there some other path that you would go through to realize that uh, yes, you can use CF Local to do that uh, you, because it has this ability to pull droplets from Cloud Foundry and push them up to Cloud Foundry. You can uh, download a droplet from one application once you've validated that that application works and upload it to another application in a different space or org or wherever. Uh, so you can use CF Local to, to enable that kind of workflow. Uh, there are some features in the platform that are coming up that will let you do that you know, without needing uh, to use CF Local as a, a separate tool. Is that like the better push stuff they, they showed? Sorry, say it again. Is that like the better push stuff that was in the keynote, the where you have like multiple droplets and you're selecting which one? Yeah, I, I, okay. I think so. All right. Are there plans for this um, build pack process to be extended for things other than CF Local? Uh, so, do you mean uh, do we plan to have other tools that you know use the same kind of model? Uh, besides CF Local to do it. So, yeah. So, the PAX Docker images I was talking about before are a tool you can use independently in CI and Concourse, you know, with whatever your CI system is, as long as it supports container images. Uh, and those are a little more uh, flexible. You can sort of, uh, you know, fit those into different kinds of pipelines in different ways to be able to use build packs, uh, you know, in, in platforms that support images and to build droplets in platforms that support images. Uh, we're looking at a whole bunch of different options <laughs> for tools we can build on top of those images for Concourse, for Jenkins, for you know, different uh, CI platforms people use, uh, for do even for doing builds in Kubernetes, for instance. Would you mind advancing one slide? I want to take a picture of that one. Sure, yeah. no problem. Thank you. Any other questions? From uh, Jacques on the side. Real quick one. You mentioned uh, Jason Hall's work on image rebase. Where would I go looking for that? Uh, I think it's in, I'm pretty sure it's in the GitHub Google org. It's called image rebase. Any other questions? All right. Thank you for coming.